Does your new instrument system greet you with please set fuel every time you turn the key? One of the features you must set up with the Dakota Digital Instrument System upon installation is the fuel gauge. There are several common sensors pre-programmed and setup is as simple as choosing yours from the list. For less common sensors, there is a custom calibration process, but we'll focus on the built-in selections for this video. We'll cover the basic setup process using a VHX system, though the method is very similar regardless of which package you have. Finally, we'll look at basic fuel sender wiring do's and don'ts, and common fuel sensor issues. The sensor's signal wire connects to the fuel send terminal on the Dakota Digital control box. Ideally, the sensor ground wire will connect to the fuel ground terminal on the control box. Doing so ensures that the gauge and the fuel sender's ground reference are the same, thereby eliminating a skewed reading. If running a dedicated ground wire simply isn't practical, ensure the sensor has a clean, solid connection to the body. You'll end up with an inaccurate fuel gauge, if not an error message, if you're counting on the sensor to ground through the tank and the straps. Don't ground the sensor in more than one location, and don't ground the control box ground terminal to the body. This is a ground point to the sensor, and should be connected to the sensor only. Enter the setup menu of your instrument system. For VFD3, VHX, and RTX systems, hold switch 1 while turning the ignition power on. No need to fire the engine. For HDX systems, with the key already on, hold both switches and follow the on-screen prompts. Once in the setup menu, tap the switch to scroll to fuel, then hold the switch to enter the submenu. If you know what sensor is installed in the fuel tank, scroll to sender and select it from the list. Hold the switch to save your selection. If you're unsure what you have, move to the test feature. The instruments will display the resistance reading from the sensor. We suggest running the test with a full tank, but this reading can still be useful if you know how much fuel you have. For example, 74 ohms equates to just over 3 quarters tank with our 0 to 90 ohm sensor. Tap the switch until you see done. Hold the switch to save the changes and exit the fuel submenu. If the fuel gauge reading still doesn't make sense after selecting what should be the correct sensor, it's time to dig a little deeper. Disconnect the sensor wire from the control box and, using a quality multimeter, measure the resistance on this wire. If that reading still doesn't make sense, go back to the sending unit and repeat the test. Do these tests with the sensor in the tank, as a bench test may not uncover shortcomings of the physical installation. Compare the multimeter's reading with the instrument system test feature. If they differ, you could be dealing with insufficient grounding or problematic wiring. If the multimeter readings change with the key on and off, that tells us the sensor ground is poor. If your electrical tests come back acceptable, but the gauge still isn't acting correctly, don't rule out the possibility of a physical installation problem. Ensure the float arm can sweep through its full range of motion. Oftentimes we'll find the float has fallen off the float arm, contacting the side of the tank, or has fallen off completely. If the fuel gauge really isn't making sense, double check that the sensor arm is on the correct side of the sensor. A backwards arm happens a lot more than you think. And finally, inspect the float arm itself. Excessive bends can cause the reading to be higher or lower than the actual fuel level. With the programming dialed in and installation issues taken care of, you'll have a fuel gauge that keeps you in the know and off the side of the road.